Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn de Guzman with INN. I'm speaking with Graham Arvidsson, CEO of Australian Vanadium, based in Perth, Australia. Hi, Graham. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Yes, good to have you. So this is the first time that we're having a conversation. I think we could start our conversation with, you know, just talking about vanadium and why it's important, you know, against the back, the backdrop of critical minerals and, you know, the energy transition. Sure. Um, it is a really exciting metal. Um, uh, depending on who you talk to, it is in the top five uh, most important metals in the energy transition. And uh, just to give you the background, vanadium historically has been uh, almost entirely used as a uh, alloying agent in the steel industry. So that's not insignificant in that it'll continue to play an outsized role in decarbonization through that avenue. And just to summarize, one uh, one kilo of vanadium in a ton of steel basically has this really outsized impact of um, having the emissions uh, through the steel process. So we do see a really important role for vanadium in steel going forward, and that's an ongoing story of continuous growth over many decades. What we're really excited about, though, is the use of vanadium in batteries. And there's a technology out there that it's fully commercialized and proven. It was invented over 40 years ago, and it is called a vanadium flow battery. And flow batteries have been around and used in niche applications for a very long time. But why we're excited and where they're going to come to the fore and create all kinds of new demand in vanadium is in what we call long duration storage. So stationary applications that require uh, four, six, eight, 10 or 12 hours, that's where these batteries become highly economic and they have some really unique attributes that make them really excellent for these long duration grid applications. So the batteries will last 25 years with virtually no degradation. They're in terms of the, the circle uh, recyclability, they can be recycled very easily and simply at the end of life if there is an end of life. And importantly, they're non-flammable and therefore the cost, uh, the, the safety of the battery is is excellent. Now, what the question is always asked, why aren't these batteries seen more often? Why, why aren't people so aware of vanadium? The, the answer is that until now, there hasn't really been a need for long duration storage. And as grids continue the decarbonization journey, there's a really significant demand curve for requiring technologies like flow batteries that work well and economically at those longer durations. So I think you'll see um, it's already happening in China. You're seeing massive growth in flow battery installations, uh, really significant demand growth. And also interestingly in lockstep in China, they're installing manufacturing capacity for these batteries as well. So we uh, at Australian Vanadium very excited about how that plays out, not just in China, but in the rest of the world as the unique attributes of this fully commercialized technology uh, become more prominent and that the applications for it, um, you know, really excel. So here in Australia, as one example, the AEMO, which is the key uh, forecaster on the east coast of Australia, they're forecasting 40 gigawatt hours of this, um, what they call long duration technology that's required just by 2030. And the implications of that for vanadium are wonderful uh, in terms of the market. And we intend to participate that in, in the near future. So that's a little snapshot of vanadium uh, right now. And it's just really starting that journey and China's the forerunner and we expect that to follow in other jurisdictions. Right, so it's, it's uh, probably a good time to talk about your company. Um, you know, as we said, this is the first time we're having a conversation, maybe provide our audience sort of an overview of what um, AVL or Australian Vanadium is, uh, what your value proposition is and why should investors be interested in your company? Wonderful. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Look at Australian Vanadium, uh, our core thesis is, is to be a, a low cost producer of Vanadium oxides and our core strategy we call pit to battery. So. Why should you be interested in AVL is we are situated in the Midwest of Western Australia. So jurisdictionally, currently 60% of the world's vanadium supply comes from China, another 15% from Russia, and another 10% from South Africa. There's a real need for additional jurisdictional production. And the Midwest of Western Australia here, we have some of the best VTM deposits that by vanadium, titanium, magnetite, all of the world's primary production comes from these VTM style deposits. 
And AVL is one of the most, if not the most advanced primary uh, development assets in the world. And how we intend to be a low cost producer is simply by having a really good ore body. We have a very long mine life, 25 years, and we have some excellent vanadium grades that will basically underpin why we can be a low cost producer. And then furthermore, not to be overlooked, we are uh, a team of vanadium experts on our board. We have Daniel Harris, who's been in the industry for many decades, very well known as, as a vanadium expert. Our COO, Todd Richardson, has been operating in vanadium assets his whole life. And myself in a past life has operated a vanadium asset as well. So we're deeply knowledgeable and we're very lucky to be um, underpinned by a very um, advanced uh, low cost asset. So we intend to be a tier one producer here in Western Australia in the near future. And uh, the investment proposition really is to get behind the asset now as we continue to finalize all the things to de-risk the asset. So finalizing permitting, financing, offtake, and the various things that flow past the DFS. So our economics are currently underpinned by a definitive feasibility study. And uh, I think we could talk very quickly now about the merger that we just completed that really um, improves our odds of success. Yeah, so that was what was uh, the recent news that you had uh, a merger with Technology Metals Australia. Could you talk a bit more, a bit more about that, the highlights of that and what that, why that is significant? Yes, thanks. Um, Really significant for both of our companies to come together. Um, We enter into a scheme of arrangement in September to join the two businesses together. And we've just completed that process in early February to become one bigger, better project. And I would just highlight the really important things that flow from that merger. Uh, First and foremost is that all of the key strategic imperatives that both of our businesses were pursuing are going to become simpler now. So we're both pursuing advanced assets where we need offtake uh, financing, and that's debt and equity. Um, and we need to finalize our permitting. And all of that becomes a simpler story. So even as a, a standalone uh, entity, as one entity, all those things will become easier. But ultimately, why mergers uh, can achieve what we think is one plus one equals three is the physical properties of the asset. So the obvious things like uh, rationalizing infrastructure are there and we're going to pursue those to improve the economics of the project. But actually bringing these tenements together offers us opportunities as well to improve the economics of the assets. So we're uh, trying to finalize a series of trade-off studies that will be uh, finalized in the next quarter. And off the back of that, we'll refresh our feasibility study to include the what we think are very material benefits to the asset and financeability and profitability and then NPV of the project. So really exciting uh, few months ahead of us as we uh, work through what the combined asset can look like and we look forward to updating our investors as we get through that. Is part of the the strategy moving forward to um, uh, you know eventually produce the vanadium and if so, for offtake agreements that you're anticipating, are you anticipating more coming from the battery sector than the traditional, uh, you know, steel alloy? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, um, offtake is highly strategic for us. Um, as I said, the the battery market is extremely exciting, and through our subsidiary Vsun, uh, over a number of years, we've been developing that market specifically in Australia, but globally in terms of how we can uh, leverage our product into the battery market. So when we think about offtake, there's the traditional routes that need to be there because as we're sitting here today, um, you know, so over 85% of the market is still steel. In the last uh, three or four years, it has, in terms of use in batteries, it has gone uh, from less than 1% of the global market to what is now today over 10%. So that's a pretty staggering change over only sort of three years. But it still means that our product probably needs to play a role in steel and batteries. So as we think about offtake, it's about making sure we have the right partners to achieve both. It's getting exposure to the battery story, uh, I think, as big and as best as we can. And then uh, making sure our project is still underpinned and marketable in the in the, the known bankable steel industry. So um, that's how we're thinking about offtake and we're pursuing really advanced talks with a number of opportunities across those spaces. 
So what are your plans for 2024? What can the investor community expect from the company this year? Look, I think the the main catalyst to look out for is um, how this merger comes together. So I think we can, uh, by the end of this next quarter, we can really shed some light on uh, the work we've been working on since we announced the merger in September, finalizing that work and then letting our investors know where we think that'll take us with the project in terms of improved economics. Um, then there's just the obvious and uh, same uh, strategic imperatives as before that will continue to unlock valuation of this project, and that is finalizing all of our approvals, securing that offtake. So we produce vanadium, but we also produce some co-products, and getting binding offtake for those co-products will, I think, uh, give us in our investors further confidence in the economics of the project. Um, and really financing. So as, as the projects come together, we can really put our foot down on progressing the debt financing side as we seek to get really favorable uh, government-related uh, debt funding opportunities. And uh, we do, if our investors recall, we've secured a $49 million federal grant, um, 10 million of which we were paid in June last year. But we're working really hard to continue to unlock um, the additional milestone payments from that $49 million grant and look forward to updating the market as that unfolds as well. Great. Well, thanks, Graham, for joining me and uh, speaking with me today about your company. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insight. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates and interviews. See you next time.